got a bit of an interesting video for you today. So I'm going to be showing you the 500i. And I've been playing with the chain with it a lot. This is an intriguing saw, you know what I mean? It's, it's got its RPM that it wants to run at. And if your chain's not aggressive enough, it hangs on the rev limiter, which a lot of people would interpret that as four stroking, but technically on this saw would be rev limiter, which is why a lot of people blow up their ported saws because they lean them out when the chain's not aggressive enough. Uh, it's one of those things. But, you know, this saw is one of those ones that won't let you lean it out. You have to be 100% spot on with your chain. Uh, it is a Briscoe built steel 500i. It's ported and it runs excellent. But, you know, I've been playing with the chain. So what you're going to see here is see, whenever we had the little event here at my place, we ran it. And the chain just wasn't quite there. You know what I mean? Uh, I had just started trying to figure out the chain. And it just wasn't quite there. So throughout the day, you know, knocked some off the rakers and stuff. Ended up with a 40,000th raker. And that's where you're going to see some of the first test cuts on this video. It's going to be sitting, you know, a sharpening with a 40,000th raker. After that, I resharpened the tooth to a more aggressive style one of my one of my more aggressive styles and it ended up being in a situation where it was way too much raker the saw was basically trying to rip itself out of my hands so what i did after that is i switched to the bar and chain that's running on my 660 which is the way i think i think this 500 i is going to like it but this is kind of an example of when a deeper raker does not make you faster a lot of people think, you know, that you can go deeper and deeper and deeper on your raker, you can get more speed. And I, I just, a lot of times I'm not finding more speed with a deeper raker. It, uh, it's like it kind of interferes with the tooth itself and being able to perform to its fullest. You know what I mean? Uh, I, it's, just, it's just how I feel. It's kind of the, the way I've been finding things to happen. But that's, I think, partly because, like, there was a day, I wouldn't say a day, but there was a period whenever my sharpening got to a point, and it just, it was like a switch. It just clicked. And things really started to run a lot better. And then I found out that once I figured that out, all of my rakers were running too deep. All of them. So I ended up having to throw away a bunch of chain, you know, because all the rakers were just so deep. That it wasn't going to work and it's because i finally got to that point where things clicked and my teeth were starting to perform the way they're supposed to perform so now my rakers were too deep and overcompensating for my shortfalls in the tooth so yeah let's watch this video though we're going to see the saw run with a 40,000th raker the tooth eh, you know what i mean it's so so not not it doesn't hardly have any self feed so Everything you see happening is me pushing it through the cut. It's not really hardly pulling on the saw at all. The next one is a whole crap ton of cell feed because the raker's too deep and everything. You know, the two sharpen properly now, but it just, the raker's entirely too deep. Which one do you think is gonna be faster? I can tell you it's not what you're expecting. So that's the first clip we're gonna show you though, is those two. The one with a 40,000 raker and I have to push it through the cut hard and then the other one is just me resharpening the tooth, much better tooth, and running it again. And you're going to see, see what, look, look what the difference in cut times are. Um, you'll be surprised because I find there's something going on in the tooth that really affects the speed of your cut. It's interesting. So check it out. <laughs>
chain made a cut basically the same speed as a really well sharpened tooth with a super deep breaker running about the same speed why is the question you know what I mean the rpm is the same on both because it's a 500 I you can't do nothing about that rpm with the tune it's gonna run at whatever rpm it wants to run at you know what I mean so everything is up to you and your tooth and your chain or whatever you want to call it so why was it that this chain that didn't have any cell feed at all it felt dull in the cut it did it just it felt horrible it felt super dull and you had to rely entirely on the way you push it through why was that one cutting in the end at the same speed as the one that was super duper aggressive you know what i mean why Now, I'm going to show you another clip of the way I like the chain to run. It's the bar and chain off the 660. I threw it on the 500i. We're going to run it. We'll see how it runs. This is the way I like them to run. I do not know if it's going to be faster. And I'll be honest, I do not care. The chain runs so smooth, so comfortable in every aspect. You know what I mean? It's one of those chains where it just stick it on the wood and just let it do its thing. You know what I mean? That's what sharpening and a good sharpening is all about. It's it's how comfortable it is to run, at least to me. Now there is a point when things can be too too uh, too much, and there's a point when it can be too little, and it's trying to find that sweet spot. You know what I mean? So here you go. Let's see how see how this chain performs, and then we'll stick it up against both the other ones and see if it outperforms. Them. Ah, 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 ah. 
So I moved over here to the picnic table to do this edit so I could put my comment in the video. And, you know, I'm really not surprised to see those results. So the force through at a 40,000th raker cut about the same speed, roughly, as an aggressive tooth at 40,000th raker. So, so a less aggressive chain versus a really aggressive chain sitting at the same raker ended up finishing at about the same time. But as soon as I took the raker up, I said 25 thousandths earlier, I was wrong, it's 30 thousandths. So the chain is sitting at a 30 thousandths raker. But anyway, exact same sharpening angles on a less aggressive raker created a much smoother cut. Now, on the smaller wood, you really couldn't tell the difference. In fact, if you'd go back and rewind, you'll notice that I let off the trigger on all of those cuts on the little piece of wood. So at the last instant, I did, I let off the trigger a little early. So that, that's why, I, I'll probably explain why that cut seemed to come in just a hair behind. But the big difference was on the big wood. The, the chain wasn't overworking the saw. It was cutting extremely smooth and it ended up being much faster in the end. So just try and keep that in mind. Sometimes deeper rakers are not the answer. Um, it's something I've been toying with recently. Something I discovered recently, I should say. Uh, so you might have heard me commenting in videos in the past. Never go more than a 25,000th raker. I've made that comment a hundred times. So here's an instance where you could go to a 30,000th raker, but you got to understand this is a ported 500i, and it's not, it's not just a, you know, an, an, an average saw. This is something quite a bit more powerful than what most homeowners or anybody would be running. So it's able to handle it. For most people, you'll never want to go more than a 25,000th raker, especially when you start playing with the sharpenings that I'm going to be showing you in these future videos. So it's, it's kind of, I guess you could say, a lesson learn, to learn. Um, 25 thousandths is the sweet spot. Now, again, we're playing with hard wood. Softwoods are a completely different story, especially your pines and stuff. These hardwoods, especially your oaks and stuff, I'm telling you, take it from me, try to stick with a 25 thousandth raker no more. Um, you'll find in the end when your sharpening hits the, that sweet spot, like I was talking, you'll find your cut speeds actually are faster with a 25,000 raker. It, how, it, it, it needs to be a smooth cutting chain is what I'm getting at. It has to be smooth in order to be fast. So um, it, the smoother it's running, the faster it'll cut. And I can tell you the day I learned how to make an aggressive chain without it having a whole lot of chatter was the day that everything seemed to click. So, you know what I mean? A, an aggressive chain without chatter? Have you ever heard of such a thing? I want to be showing you. So, yeah. Make your chains run smooth. They will cut faster in the end. So, alrighty. Hope you enjoyed this little one. We'll catch you on the next one. Later.